Well, welcome back everyone uh, to All Things Food with Sherilyn Berry. I'm an extension agent here at the Durham County Center. And uh, we've had such a fun time over the past few weeks um, sampling all different kinds of food. Uh, here we are in the food lab this week rather than my office uh, because it's necessary to be here to teach you about um, our subject today, which is the coconut. So coconuts are wonderful. Uh, they're tasty, they're nutritious, they're full of delicious fats and protein and very low in carbohydrates. Um, the reason this is called a coconut, even though it's not a true nut, it's actually technically a fruit. It's considered a droop. So a droop usually is a fruit with one seed in it. Uh, things that fall under, under this category are things like peaches, cherries, um, anything that has usually one seed in it, uh, avocados, even though none of those are related, this is the classification they are. So this is a young coconut fruit, and this is the seed on the inside. And so we actually enjoy the endosperm of the seed on the inside. So um, the reason that this is called a coconut, even though it's not a true nut, is that uh, it's a seed, so people think it's that, and uh, it's very oily, so it, it compares to a lot of tree nuts. Um, but Portuguese sailors, uh, since this looks like a face or a skull, they called it a coconut. Um, if you look, there's, it looks like two little eyes and a mouth. So we're gonna learn about coconuts today, but then we're also gonna learn how to open these today because they can be a little bit intimidating. And um, my seeds kids who all got a young and a older coconut like this, um, I wanted them to know how to, out of the 14 of them, I think two of them knew how to open a coconut. And so this is really fun. So we're gonna do this today. But first let's talk a little bit about coconuts, where they grow, um, things like that. So coconuts grow on a palm tree. And the reason that these are different than a regular tree nut is that trees are, the, the tree nuts that we know, those are dicotyledons, they, you know, which basically means they have two little leaves that come out on the very first time that you know, the seed, uh, the plant comes out of the ground. Um, a palm tree is like a grass. It's not a grass, but it's a monocotyledon. It has one little um, leaf that comes out. So they're just characteristically completely different. So um, it, the palm trees are just different than, uh, than tree nuts or, or trees that have nuts on them and lots of other trees like oak trees and things like that. So um, this is a young coconut, a green coconut, and often you will see a coconut look like this. This is a, what a young coconut looks like when you remove the husk off of it. So inside of this coconut is gonna have like delicious spoonable meat in it, which we'll talk about. While this coconut is an older aged coconut and if it had its husk on it, it would be completely brown rather than have any green on it. And this one has like a solid center and this is you know, what we use in desserts, coconut flour, coconut milk, things like that. So nobody really knows where coconuts originated because coconuts, uh, have the ability to, if this fell off of a tree on an island, it can float on the ocean to another island, get washed up on the shore and sprout right there. So nobody really knows where coconuts came from. This is considered the tree of life because you can actually live off of coconuts. You might be a little malnourished, you would have to find some other kinds of food like proteins and things um, to survive, but um, coconuts not only give water because there's water on the inside of it, it's sterile inside of a coconut. So if you're stranded on a desert island with coconut trees, um, and you can crack open the coconut. There's all kinds of survival videos on YouTube of how to break a coconut without using too much energy. Um, it, 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 there was a movie called Castaway, if no one's seen that, some people have, um, where uh, Tom Hanks, his character, um, has to break into coconuts to survive and he spends a lot of energy doing it. So um, you can actually break into them with rocks, not using too much energy. Look it up, it's pretty entertaining. Um, but it, you can get water out of it, delicious water that has salts and sugar in it. Um, you can get food off of it by eating either the soft gel on the young coconut or the, um, the coconut endosperm on the inside once, it's, once it solidifies. Um, you can also, this husk on the outside, when it dries, it actually, um, you can peel this off and weave rope out of it. 
the tree can be knocked down the palm tree and you can dig it out to make a canoe out of it. You can burn the husk and make charcoal out of it. Charcoal is a, a big uh, beauty product right now. You can get charcoal toothpaste, charcoal soap, charcoal, you know, teeth whitener. You can get all kinds of things with charcoal in it, charcoal face masks. The most common form of charcoal that you'll find in the beauty industry is actually burning this husk down to just the charcoal and it's used in beauty products. So um, this is, and, and really there's just so many uses for coconut. Give it, you know, give it a web search, you'll see. It's, that's why island communities call this the tree of life. Um, also Pacific Islanders um, were expert uh, canoe makers and expert sailors. And so they actually discovered all of these islands and populated all of these islands in the Pacific by just going out on a canoe and, fig and figuring out where to go, navigating by uh, starlight. It's really fascinating. And these peoples would bring a coconut or multiple coconuts and leave them on the shore and they'll sprout and within seven to 10 years, you have a full tree that can get up to 100 feet high and give you between 30 and 75 coconuts a year. So um, what's great about these is the tree can also drink brackish water. It can absorb brackish water, which is salty and fresh water mixed together, or it can live off of salt water. And that's really rare for plants. Plants usually die if you pour salt on them. So uh, coconuts are really fascinating. Um, however, if you're on the beach, I don't recommend putting your uh, towel underneath the coconut tree because they can fall. Coconuts don't usually fall individually. They actually fall in, uh, in big uh, groups, like uh, five or six or eight of them together in clusters. Um, and there's an urban legend out there that uh, more people are killed per year by coconuts falling than are killed by sharks, which is not true, actually. Um, you can look it up. Uh, there, somebody did a study and said that 150 people per year uh, die by coconut, falling coconut, and, and that's not true. So, but since we don't have a, um, a very vocabulary word for the day, this is the public service announcement I would like to share with you. Uh, and one thing that I really love about um, good public service announcements is that they're memorable. And this to me is memorable. So. It's got it in multiple languages, beware, falling coconuts, and then these here. But for some reason, there, there's a kid and what looks like a mom and a dad. For some reason, the dad has a big lollipop, and they must have really angered this tree because for some reason, the coconuts are not falling along gravity. They seem to be pitching an individual coconut at each person on this uh, public service announcement. So I saw this and thought it was hysterical and really wanted to share it with you. But... It's a good public service announcement. Stay away from coconut trees. Don't hang out under them for a considerable amount of time. One little anecdote before we get into breaking a coconut open. Um, uh, you know, well, through the uh, previous talks that we've done, most of you know that I lived in, in the tropics for a time. And uh, I used to watch this person, the same um, man, I never really met him, but he would in my neighborhood, because I lived about a half a mile in from the ocean, and he would take his belt off and wrap the belt around the uh, coconut tree and climb up it, leaning against it, all the way up like a 75-foot coconut tree and take coconuts off the tree and put them in the back of his truck. And then I would see that same man at the farmer's market and he would, while you were standing there, cut all of the husk off the coconut and then cut the top off and he had gone somewhere in the jungle and gotten these large leaves that he would cut the stem off of that was totally hollow. So for $2, you could get the freshest coconut that I've ever had. It was really fantastic. $2, it was great. He'd cut the top off and, uh, and drop that natural straw in there and you could walk around the farmer's market drinking out of a fresh coconut. And it was free. The guy made money off of just nature. I thought that was fascinating. So, okay, without further ado, let's mess around with these coconuts. Okay. All right, first, my seeds kids, you got this fresh coconut and what you're gonna need to break apart and to work with your coconuts is a screwdriver. This happens to be a really small screwdriver uh, because I didn't have a larger one here at the office. So I'm gonna work with what I got. Um, and then also a hammer. 
Um, if you don't have a hammer, you can go and find a big rock outside. Uh, but we're going to work with a hammer today. So to get into your little, your, your fresh coconut to drink out of it, you're going to just take your little screwdriver, make sure you wash your screwdriver first, get it really clean, because this is food. And you're going to set it there, and you're just going to make a hole in it. And you can move it around. Now your coconut came with a straw, but you really have to get make a big hole in there. And since mine's really small, I'm going to put one of these little, little straws in there. So it's really good. Okay, so that's the first coconut. Now, if you want to get the gel on the inside, what you have to do is get yourself a serrated knife, okay? And you're going to cut the top off the coconut. It's a little bit time consuming and you got to be really careful because there's that hard inner shell. And this is the gel on the inside. Now this coconut is not a fully mature coconut, but it's also not a fully fresh coconut because this would be like jello. And this is actually soft, like kind of like a hard pudding a little bit. It's not as hard as a hard coconut, but you can tell it's probably in the grocery store for a while. Because this is a dormant seed, but it's still maturing. And if you want a coconut that's got the gel, it's got to be cut off the tree and, and shipped to you within a couple of weeks. And then it'll still be gel on the inside. But this is delicious. Feel free to break this open and eat it. It'll be really tasty. So for our mature coconut, what we're going to do is um, we're going to take so our two little eyes in our mouth. We're going to poke holes in these two eyes. And you can poke a hole in the mouth if you want, if you want because we have to get the water out of it. Now, you don't have to do this step. You can actually break the coconut without taking the water out of it first, but you're going to make a big mess in the kitchen or wherever you're working. So I recommend taking the water out of it first. But if you're stranded on a desert island, um, you can just break this on a rock and drink it and eat it. Um, so what we're going to do is in, in our little eyes, we're going to go ahead and uh, use our hammer and our little screwdriver and make holes. Give it a little twirl to uh, make a bigger hole if you don't have a full-size screwdriver. Okay, so you've got two little holes. I'm going to go ahead and make three since I have a tiny screwdriver. It, what it will allow it to, to do is one hole will release the water and the other two will intake air um, so that the moisture comes out of it faster. Okay, and get yourself a glass and give it some time and it'll eventually come out of there, okay? So while that's doing that, well, let me talk about the juice really quick first. The juice from a fresh, co fresh coconut always tastes so much better than the juice from an older coconut. The juice from an older coconut, the older that it gets, um, it gets more um, coconutty, um, but also kind of more earthy as well. So um, I prefer the juice from a fresh coconut, but they're both still really good to drink. They're, they're still good to drink. So you'll, t you'll be able to see that the juice from the fresh coconut is more clear, um, and the juice from an older coconut is a little bit more opaque. So, um, which means like kind of cloudy. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and let this keep going. And I've taken the liberty so that this can continue to drip, since this is only a half an hour show. And uh, I went ahead and drained the coconut for you already, so we can start breaking it. Okay, so let's get back to where our little eyes are and our little mouth is, okay? The eyes, actually, you can see a seam running between the eyes, okay? Um, and if you turn it in between the mouth and, the, and another eye, you'll see seams running down the coconut. Those are the weakest point of the coconut, okay? And so here's the face of the coconut, and we're going to draw a line kind of like a belt that goes all the way around, and we're going to hit that with a hammer over and over again, paying particular attention to where the seams are. And you just keep smacking at it, and the coconut will eventually break. Let's see how long this takes. <laughs> an intermission. Ooh. That guy's cracking. Okay. So there's your coconut. And then if you want to take the flesh out of here, 
what you're going to do is get yourself a little knife. Now, never work like this towards your hand. You can probably tell why that would be a bad idea. Sharp object and your hand is in front of it and you're cutting towards yourself. So set your coconut up on the table. Get the stuff out of there first so you have kind of a clean area. And then what you're going to do is you're going to cut along the edge like this. Cut a little piece and then pull it out. Okay, just like that. You just keep going around and you pull it out, okay? And you just keep going all the way around the edge. Actually, in the Philippines and Thailand, they actually have these really cool little knives that kind of shape upwards to a point, and those are really effective. But you can just do this with a paring knife at home. Just like that. So these are absolutely delicious. All right, so let's talk about some of the products that these that make that go from coconut into products so this juice ignore the brand names because it doesn't matter the stuff's all the same so ignore that brand name okay this coconut water comes from a fresh coconut now <clears throat> you'll hear people say, <coughs> i'm sorry i breathed in some coconut um you'll hear people say that coconut water is this like you know amazing beverage that has um that's um, isotonic, that it has the same salts as your body, and that it has all these medical benefits. There's no research to prove that, but it is delicious and, and has vitamins and minerals in it. Um, and it will rehydrate you if you're really, really thirsty. So this is a lovely, lovely product. I enjoy that, but all the different brands are great. Um, coconut oil, actually, coconut oil comes from uh, the mature coconut like this. So first you start with coconut milk. What they do to, to make coconut milk, you take the coconut, you uh, put it in a, like a food processor or you can grate it and you add water. And then you, you mix it up real, real well until this is like a pulp and then you squeeze it. That first squeeze is full fat coconut milk. Now you can mix that pulp again with water and squeeze it again and you get light coconut milk. Light coconut milk is um, like a byproduct of coconut milk making. So if you're trying to get low fat coconut milk, just get a regular can of coconut milk and cut it half with water and you've got the same thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then when they dry the coconut or desiccate it, you can get coconut flour. This is a great thing to use in, uh, it's gluten free. So people who have celiac disease or avoiding gluten, this is a great thing that you can substitute into things. It's really full of fiber. Um, and vitamins, uh, so this is a great little product that you could use. But you have to really like the taste of coconut um, because everything will taste like coconut if, if you're putting this in there. So let's see, anything else that I'm missing? Oh, sometimes you'll see a white coconut. This is not a young coconut. This is a mature coconut of a different variety of coconut. There are thousands of different kinds of coconuts. Um, uh, they found fossilized coconuts in different countries that are like as big as a walnut and then all the way up to big coconuts like this. So there's a lot of genetic diversity in uh, the coconut palm family. Okay. All right. So that's coconut, a good coconut vision. Uh, if anybody wants to ask questions about coconuts or anything else, please do. It's hard to talk when you're on mute. Uh, so our first question is a nutritional question about cholesterol. Um, did coconuts products have a lot of cholesterol, particularly coconut oil? Great question. You got to know that cholesterol is actually only comes from animals. So this is an advertising thing that I think is hilarious. Uh, you'll go into like the produce department and on an avocado, it'll have a sticker that says 100% cholesterol free. Well, yeah, because cholesterol only comes from animals. Um, plants have plant sterols, which actually don't raise your cholesterol. Um, one of the reasons you might be asking this is that coconut oil got a bad name in the 80s. And the reason was is because they said, oh, avoid coconut oil. It's full of saturated fat. It's true, saturated fats are solid at room temperature, butter, lard, coconut oil, stuff like that. But coconut oil is in a different class because it's a plant fat. And uh, actually, this, they did do a study on coconut oil and it raised people's cholesterol when they consumed a lot of it. But then you look back to that study and they used 
hydrogenated coconut oil. Hydrogenated coconut oil or any hydrogenated oil is a trans fat. And now with more modern science, we know that trans fats, no matter what their source what is in the beginning will raise your cholesterol even though they don't have cholesterol to begin with if it's a plant oil so um you know things like crisco sorry to use a brand name but that's the sort of like kleenex is a brand name but people use it as a you know hydrogenated fat that you would use to fry in if the fat is hydrogenated it doesn't matter what source it came from um, it will raise your cholesterol because it's a trans fat. Whereas that oil, if it wasn't hydrogenated, wouldn't necessarily raise your cholesterol. So that's an excellent question. Now, just from your, uh, your questioner, a follow-up question, this is not from the audience, but how do you know if it's hydrogenated or not <laughs> when you buy it? <laughs> yeah, so uh, if you buy a food that is common for the Americans to consume, most hydrogenated fats have been removed from, from foods in general. Um, but this is a really sticky wicket. So uh, you, if you look on a label, on a food label, uh, fats are going to be, uh, I believe they're at the top. Yeah, fat, how much calories, and then fat. Um, and it will tell you how much monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and then it'll say trans fat. And if it says zero, beware, read the ingredients. If anywhere in the ingredients it says hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated, that means there are trans fats in it. But because people were, the, the industry was trying to remove trans fats from foods, but still leave some of them in, uh, food lobbyists, uh, you know, <clears throat> got it. <and> then, <clears throat> sorry, that coconut's getting me. Uh, food lobbyists were able to pressure um, legislators that if there was less than <clears throat> my coconut stuck in my throat. Sorry. Oh, delicious. <clears throat> oh. Um, <clears throat> if the amount per serving of trans fat is less than half a gram, they can say zero. So that's how you can find out. Don't pay attention to the label so much for trans fat read the ingredients. If it says partially hydrogenated anywhere, it's got trans fat in it. Wow, that's fascinating. Um, so now I'll get back to our audience questions. Uh, so I think this is for one of our seeds family. Um, any tips for cutting off the top of the young coconut? I'm making zero progress. <laughs> oh, I know. You need a really good serrated knife. Be really careful with your hand, preferably where, a, and you just got to keep sawing at it. Now, if you have... Um, you know, like I have one of those old fashioned like saws for butchering. <laughs> Sorry to bring up that on, uh, on our little webinar, but um, that works really well. Or you can clean a saw, like one of the little band saws. It's like, it's got like a little, um, it's got like a U and then it's got the little uh, saw blade on it. Those work really well. But if you keep going at it, just, just keep going at it and be patient and, you know, let the knife do the work for you. Don't press too hard. Just keep, keep cranking, keep cranking and don't keep cutting all the way around, cut in the same spot and you eventually will hit and cut through the, um, the, the coconut hull in there and then you'll be able to break it open. Great. I hope that gives them some success. Um, we have another question here about coconut sugar. Is that healthier than other sugars? Coconut sugar is actually, um, oh, where did they get coconut sugar? So um, coconut sugar is, just, okay, every, coconut, every kind of sugar is still sugar. So coconut sugar is uh, nectar from either the nectar from the flowers or it might be a sap, I can't remember. I'll, I'll look this up for you. But coconut sugar is going to be the same, just like palm sugar, just like, um, uh, jaggery, just like uh, sugarcane juice that you boil all the water up of, just like molasses, it's all sugar. Honey is the same thing. So while there might be some minerals that are attached to it, it's still sugar. Now, people a lot of times will feel, even though sugar is sugar is sugar, like it's still going to raise your blood, your, your blood sugar the same way. It's still going to do all of that. Um, if you're looking at the bigger picture of the um, the sort of effect on the environment of choosing a product over another, 
Uh, a lot of people want to do that. Even though sugar is sugar is sugar, some people would choose to do jaggery or piloncillo or, uh, you know, which is sugar cane juice that's dried. Um, that is a more kind of sustainable way to get sugar because you're, you're like basically funding small family farms and they boil the moisture off the sugar and then you have this cone of sugar and you can melt it down into things. It isn't a massive conglomerate that, uh, you know, uses GMO sugar beets and sprays a ton. And um, some vegans don't want to touch uh, white sugar because they use bone to purify it to make it bright white. So there's a lot of different reasons why, why you might want to choose coconut sugar, but uh, it's still sugar biologically for you. Biochemically, it's going to react the same as if you just got like the white sugar off of the, off the shelf. You might have some minerals in there, but that's about it. But it is delicious. Great. Um, so our next question is about um, this trend of putting coconut oil in coffee. Um, have you heard about this? And if so, is that something that's healthy or good for you? Or why do people do that? Um, okay, so uh, people do that a lot of times if they're vegan or they're on a paleo diet or a keto diet. Um, it gives like a smooth mouthfeel as if you put cow's cream in it. Um, but you know, it gives you that kind of satisfaction and tempers the bitterness of certain coffees, like really dark coffees. Um, there's certainly nothing wrong with it. Uh, you know, coconuts are a heart healthy fat because they have these medium chain triglycerides. Um, they, you know, some people feel like it gives them a boost of energy. I don't know, you know, that's not my personal experience. Um, I'm of the opinion, don't yuck somebody else's yum just because I don't like something. And, you know, it's, it's a trend, just like oat milk is a huge trend right now in, uh, you know, oat milk or oat beverage um, to use for coffees. So uh, it isn't bad for you, uh, you know, and it wouldn't raise your cholesterol or do anything negatively, but you know, it's a food trend. It's a, you know, kind of a chichi fanfan kind of, kind of food trend. I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with it, but I don't think it necessarily has any, you know, health benefits like, you know, eating nine servings of vegetables or five servings of fruits and vegetables every day. But hey, you know, hey, try it. It can't hurt. Great. Well, I think we are both again out of time and out of questions. So thank you, Sherilyn, for yet another exciting episode. I'm so glad we got to do the coconut seeds, kids. I know you really wanted to do it. Um, so next week I'll be gone, but our lovely Peggy Kernodal will be here to talk about um, food safety during hurricanes, all the different kinds of thermometers that you can use. She's got a ton of information. She's an expert in food safety. And, uh, and then I'll, cause I'm taking a week off. I'll be back the week after. Not sure exactly what we're gonna, what we're gonna uh, do for that week. But again, I, I, I go by when I walk into the, um, the produce department to see what looks good that day. Awesome. Thanks, Sherilyn. And thanks everyone for joining us. Bye. Bye.